Hi everyone, I'm Professor Sally Hughes. We're live here from the EY booth and it's been an amazing day, I think, bringing together so many key themes of our time. One would be the age of tech convergence and the second would be sustainability and the third would be the move from inclusion, diversity and equity to belonging. They really are converging here at MWC 23, really building off trends from last year too. I'm going to dive into the details now with two very special guests. Chris Lubbock, fantastic to meet you here. Yeah, good to be here. Fantastic, brilliant. So let's dive straight in. I thought maybe a great place to start was a keynote that we had on day one. That was with Andy Baldwin, really looking at Formula E and the rise of sustainability, really driving that innovation, that investment and advancement. What are you seeing in that space at the moment? I'd love to drill into that and about how that is really advancing innovation in this vertical and beyond. Yeah, you're right. So we did recently a study around you know, yeah. the future of industries. Absolutely. And, um, interestingly enough, you know, when we looked at sustainability mm -hmm. and technology, uh, automotive Absolutely. You know, came at the top of you know, one of the areas that was pushing pretty hard into this sustainability Fantastic. world. I think to a certain extent, you know, part of the reason mm -hmm. we saw that is you know, post-pandemic, a lot of you know, those yes. uh, industries were impacted by the supply chain issues, mm -hmm. and so they had to really reimagine of their course, you know, supply course. chains. But along the way, that gave them that opportunity to mm -hmm. think of it not just as you know, an economic Absolutely. need, but also you know, sustainability. I love that. I think a few stats that came to mind to me from that research was around the 75% mark, give, give or take a percentage, but it was that increasing kind of prioritization of, of emerging tech, tech investment with sustainability embedded by design, but also the fact of the narrative around that too, isn't it? It's the articulation. People are really looking for that and not just kind of talking about it, but backing it up by proper research and evidence. So it's transparency, commitment and accountability. I think people are looking for around sustainability at the moment. And if I could bring you, Chris, in as well, what are you yeah. seeing on this theme? So we had Formula E, that was a really exciting investment there. Um, and what are you seeing in other verticals too, really focusing on sustainability? Yeah, look, uh, Dell Technologies is very focused on sustainability Absolutely. Right through the supply chain and all the way out to helping customers yes. achieve, uh, achieve you know, their objectives on sustainability. I think we, we spend a lot of time talking about um, mm -hmm. uh, power uh, savings, mm -hmm. etc. in this space. Dell, of course, very focused on that, both from a uh, production perspective within our own hardware environments, but also helping customers reduce, um, I mean, 30, 40% of the cost of operating yes. networks is power. Absolutely. Right? And, and so the, the conversation is not just about the infrastructure, not just about the hardware. It's all the way up into the orchestration and the automation yes. proving so that we touch less stuff, and when it's not being used, we turn it off. And, Absolutely. and so I think there's there's some really interesting advancements in those areas, both from, from all of the subcomponent companies um, within Dell's ecosystem at the hardware layer, but also up into the orchestration and automation. I love that. A bit of a shout out as well, because again, I think you know, credibility in this space is so important. We do see issues around greenwashing, etc. I'd love to give a shout out around that because the work Dell's done, I mean, I've been involved since 2013 on that. It's really, really impressive. And there's also examples of not just emergent technology, but pragmatic use of older technology too. There was a project um, with like soot, you know, exhaust from diesel engines and things, you know, partnering up a small enterprise with a big leader like Dell and kind of converting something negative like pollution to something that can be used for packaging and paint and then scaled out. A great way to be pragmatic and come together. I think collaboration is such a big theme as well. So I wanted to shout out for that because everybody has agency to make a difference and sometimes you'd have to look in different places, don't you? That makes it very easy to be proud of yes. on, on, uh, on green initiatives. It's uh, there's some really exciting projects. Ocean Plastics is one. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. There was a very unique project. When I, just when I joined, there was a unique project to take the gold from yes. circuit boards of used computers and absolutely. turn it into jewellery yes. and, uh, and sell it as a sustainable. I love that. I've got a piece of that as well. And it's, it's kind of visibility of that theme as well. And it cuts it into new audiences and makes it accessible and relatable. So I love that. I think it's super important. Equally, with the EY research as well, as I spoke about earlier, people want more information. They want to make conscious choices. And that research evidence base helps people to see you know, what the changing expectations, behavioral trends are, but also you know, key insights to take action about relating to that and being an active listener. So I think the, the findings from your new research from a few weeks ago is really on point about that. That's right, yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're very focused on the customer market consumers yes. and trying to really understand, you know, how some of those changes are happening. Absolutely. Right? And it, it's true, I think, you know, uh, new consumers are much more, you know, oriented to, to sustainability and, Absolutely. and that idea. I think we were talking about some of the packaging for, for Dell computers, for instance, where yes. you know, now you know, some of the plastic wrapping Absolutely. is Absolutely. You know, uh, yeah. recycled, you know, ocean mm -hmm. plastics. 
and I think those are some of the things that consumers notice now, right? Definitely, definitely. And perhaps we can like pivot to another theme. So kind of losing the SDGs as a kind of base mark here. Another thing that's come up, and again, very close to heart, I have a non-profit in this particular area, but how would we break down barriers to access to opportunity? One of those is breaking the digital divide. We've seen a lot around that. I mean, Pew Research very recently in the US was saying, I think it was around 35% of households didn't have reliable high-speed internet connection. That's a massive impact. You know, education is the foundation for so many opportunities, isn't it? So I'd love to both in on this one about the work that you're both collectively doing to help impact that because there's a lot happening and it'd be great to share more about that and again more people hopefully can get involved. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, EY is big on yes. the, uh, you know, on helping bridge that digital divide mm. and um, we work actually a lot you know, with the communication service providers but also even more with the municipalities. Fantastic. To think about, you know, strategically how do we help tackle that. Wonderful. With you know, different mixes of technologies, how can we you know, accelerate some of, uh, of, uh, of those uh, activities. So a lot of public, you know, private partnerships are Absolutely. being talked about and, uh, and being looked at. So we, we bring a lot of data analytics and insights yes. you know, to that and help kind of model those, uh, those different parameters to to help really accelerate the, those pieces. Absolutely, that data decision, like active decision making is so, so important. Kind of right data, right role, right time, isn't it? Um, but again, that the information you're providing alongside the technology, facilitating people through that journey, I think is really important too. And as you said, governments, all different areas, it's all voices being heard. That's how we get collective change, isn't it? It's so, so important. And Chris, what are you seeing there, particularly around the connectivity and breaking those divides? Yeah, I mean, like EY, we, we take uh, access to technology. Yes. Very, it's a very important topic. Uh, I think there's a couple of areas right for us, certainly on access to compute and, and absolutely sure that, uh, that all all groups of society have, have equal mm -hmm. access to, uh, to, to that to the tooling. Um, we work deeply with a lot of our carrier partners actually absolutely. to put some of those tools into the hands of, of the most needy neighborhoods fantastic. and the most needy children and, and globally. And those programs are fantastic. The other the other uh, equally important area is uh, is just access to broadband. And, yes. And so, because we're at a telecom show, that's a, a absolutely, a absolutely. Topic. But uh, using 5G as an example for rural infill and, yes. and uh, fixed broadband and fixed mobile wireless, there's there's a. Uh, I come from a, a part of a, a town in Canada that yes. still, despite being a Western country, has absolutely, no yeah. And, and and 5G may be the first time my my father actually sees broadband to the farm. Right? So wow. These are, there's a lot of underserved communities in the Western world, never mind. Uh, Definitely. Country. So I think uh, we're still trying to make sure. Uh, the industry needs to work to make sure that everybody has access. Absolutely. So, so critical. And as I said, the contagion of positive change impact from getting that right is so important. When we look at underserved communities as well, I think there's a really interesting look. So if you look at communities that are most affected by, say, security challenges, um, most affected by sustainability challenges, um, but also least included, all those three actually come together. There's a knock-on effect between the three of them. So get that right, the ripple impact of change can be really quite significant. So fantastic. And what we'll do in the show notes as well, I've already, I'm involved in some myself, and there's others that are new that are emerging. We'll share some you know, programs and examples of this in the show notes as well, because again, I think it's so important to spread the word about that. So let's pivot slightly and think about what tech change is enabling some of this impact in sustainability and inclusion. I think one of the trends we've seen here over the last couple of days already is kind of moving beyond focus on cloud to edge and like the rise of the intelligent edge. I'd love to get your take and perhaps Chris first on this, wherever which way we'd want to take it, but what are you seeing there, what your customers are asking, where do you see that trajectory moving? Yeah, I, it's been really nice over the last couple of days to yes. see the acknowledgement that uh, edge is not in one place. Exactly, edge, yes. Edge is where it is. <laughs> yes. uh, it's either a device or a car <laughs> or, or an industrial application uh, or a carrier network edge. Um, what's, what's pervasive, I think, is the conversation around what use cases are driving tangible, actual you know, uh, production environments. And, and I think the, we spent most of last year working on does the technology work? Yes. The technology proof points of these mm -hmm. environments, I think, have largely been proven out. And the, one of the reasons the collaboration with EY mm -hmm. is so powerful is it's just because now we're into the operational business case of course, side of the equation. Of course. So the, the collaboration between the technologist in the room yes. and the business case uh, team in the room is mm -hmm. quite powerful in this case. I think we're going to see a lot more of those conversations this year. 
I love that. And just before I love that you come in as well, I just think, again, in terms of other themes, that the power of the ecosystem of partnership, we saw it with the pandemic, didn't we? everything happens better when we come together. And you know, with that open data sharing and that better collaboration and co-creativity, amazing things happen. I think if we use the example of that and what we saw in kind of accelerating the innovation curve in health and apply that to inclusion, sustainability, et cetera. Wow, how far can we come? Love that. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you under pressure yeah, there, but over no, to no. you. What do you think? No, absolutely. <laughs> We're very excited to, to work together because I think you know, to, to, to Chris's point, yes. a lot of great technology capabilities have come up over the past few years and you know the technology is ready for it. But you know, absolutely. thinking about all those business use cases that, that, that are going to drive the impact, yes. I think is what you know, brings us together and the, the passion. And um, what I love about it is that you know, we have different stakeholders we need to talk to. You know, those business cases need to make sense, not just you know, from uh, sustainability and uh, you know, uh, uh, impact of standpoint, course, of course. but also from a financial standpoint. Absolutely. So I think this is where you know, our collaboration is great. You know, where you, we bring sound technology advice, but also with a tangible financial yes, indeed. To, to our stakeholders. We speak our stakeholders' languages each, yes. you know, and, and are able to bring those together. Mm. So. That's important too, that shared language, shared vision. That's really, really, really important as well. And I'd love to explore kind of what's next in that alliance. If there's anything else you can share where this is heading. And then I'm going to do a little pivot for, for a little non-profit series that we run, because I think you guys will be amazing contributors to that and really helping to spread the word and get more people involved. Yeah, look, I, this is the, for, for Dell Technologies, this is mm -hmm. the year where it comes alive. Yes. I think we've made, uh, over the last couple of years, large investments both on the enterprise edge side, mm -hmm. helping uh, enterprise customers figure out how to drive these use cases with the, part, the software partners, et cetera. And then, you know, that's coinciding with our telecoms business, which cool. is helping the carriers address those opportunities, both in the network and at the customer's edge. Uh, as those all come to life this year, I think, I think we're going to see uh, we're going to see more and more proof uh, that these Absolutely. models work, and we're going to see more and more opportunity to repeat those success stories. I love uh, that. Hopefully. And I think it's this shared value proposition, isn't it? We're seeing, and again, some other research that came out recently, I think it was 2. Point, yeah, 2.7% differential already in terms of organizations that are investing in, in kind of creating shared value and what their kind of worth is, you know, looking at the FTSE and things like that. It's, we're already starting to see um, behavioral change as well. People are walking away from organizations if they don't see that alignment around what you believe in personally, professionally, you know, whether you're a consumer or an ecosystem partner or a potential, you know, potential employee even. It's coming into onboarding processes now, particularly with Gen Z. I don't think we, we don't understand yet what's coming. Yeah, exactly, yet. I mean, exactly. I it, it was a good conversation we had yesterday actually about mobile phones and, yes. and the fact that uh, all of the innovation in mobile happened absolutely. after developers got a good sense of what was possible. Absolutely, right? so absolutely. I think we're still exploring use cases that are obvious. Yes. And I don't think we have yet to really understand what's uh, what's coming. I think Fantastic. We, we give people ultra reliable connectivity at the edge. Uh, I think the developers will surprise us. Exactly, use cases to be invented, as they say, definitely. Yeah, I think our approach to it is really like the, the people at the center of it. Yes, right? absolutely. And trying to, to figure out, you know, to Chris's point, right, mm -hmm. um, you know, how are people going to, to adapt to it? I think they're going to have all those tools in hand, and you know, it's yeah. going to be exciting to see how absolutely. innovation is going to drive, you know, you know people, uh, you know, new behaviors and then absolutely. new capabilities. Absolutely, and you're right there as well. Again, all of these conversations is never just about technology, it's around culture, it's around change management, as you were saying, you know, CICD, for example, it's around process, it's around skills. All these things have to integrate and come together. And on our final point, I know we're getting short of time, but I'm gonna to have to throw in this question. So, in, um, visibility of role models in tech, again, a, a recurring theme at this event as well, is how do we be more, more inclusive? How do we change the narrative on what a tech career actually looks like and get more people involved from the broadest sense of diversity? You now, I'm doing a program at Neuro diversity at this moment it's just one example of that if I could ask you both you know if you want to have a top tip to help people maybe reconsider tech and what we can do look at all the impact we've discussed today but what would that be where would you advise people to go for support or maybe an experience shared anything in that realm I think would be really valuable for our audience today yeah I mean I'm, I'm a big believer mm -hmm. that you know starting early with yes. some of the stem programs is extremely Absolutely. important but I'm also That's, very passionate mm -hmm. in my role yep. in making sure that we also bring more women in technology. Absolutely, and, absolutely. And so I know even as part of my team, you know, we have you know, a strong you know, a set of women that are really absolutely. up and coming Fantastic. and that I'm really pushing into the, the women in tech sure. network. Absolutely. Um, 
another one that, that is very key to, to, our, to our team is also women in key technology. Yes, so yes. I feel like you know, all of this is really you know, taking off mm. and we're getting so Absolutely. much talent you know, through this pipeline and I'm, I'm very excited for, for the future ahead of us. That's wonderful to hear and I think also the sponsorship of Diversity for Tech here at MWC 23 is a great example of that. I had an amazing chat about that yesterday and it's that leadership in this space is hugely important and what you were saying there as well, kind of also not just supporting through say mentorship but sponsorship as well, you know, putting people forward but maybe you wouldn't have the confidence to do that yourself, things like that, even little changes like that can make a huge difference to someone's life. Chris, over to you for some final thoughts. You look at a, at a corporate level, mm -hmm. Dell takes their, uh, their mm -hmm. uh, quality uh, programming very seriously. Absolutely. And, and very, very, very mm -hmm. nothing say, not to be proud of there, but as a top mm -hmm. tip, like I, I'm the father of two young girls. Yes. And, and I would say that uh, mm -hmm. the top tip is, I'll agree with you, Ludwig, sign mm -hmm. up for the STEM program. Definitely. School, right? Definitely. Like these girls, particularly young girls, I don't think we... We don't give them enough credit mm. early enough yes. uh, to open their minds to the possibilities. Absolutely. So my girls are listening. I can. Uh, I'll, I'll ask them to sign up for STEM programs. Uh, Fantastic. It's, it's, uh, it, it is amazing uh, how much they don't know. Yes. Uh, at the ages of high school. Absolutely, absolutely. And seriously, if they would love to be on the show as well, talking about their experiences, they'd be most welcome because kind of got age seven now up to 90 yeah. in terms of people appearing. Because again, you want to see someone that's relatable to you, don't you? That looks like you, talks like you, maybe it's come from the same background. And again, I would say there's no linear path into tech. Don't think you have to come from a, say, coding background or something like that. All schools matter. Never been more accessible. Right? Exactly, never exactly, been more accessible. definitely. Definitely, the barriers of access have most definitely gone down absolutely the way it should be. Chris Lovick, I know we're out of time, but thank you so much for your time today. It really is a journey, I think, across, as I said, intelligent edge, sustainability, inclusion, and much more. And they're all coming together. And if we do this right, we get shared impact, shared value, and we can scale it too. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you both. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Brilliant.